Hi, I'm Anna, and this is episode four. And this episode is all about compounds, or compounding, which is when we put two free morphemes together to create one larger word. So let's have a look at how compounding works. And we'll do that by looking at these three words here. Football, whiteboard, and overcoat. Now it's important to know that a variety of different free morpheme word classes can be used to create a compound noun. It doesn't always have to be two nouns. So in the case of football, we have foot, which is our first morpheme, and that's a noun. And we have ball, which is the second uh, morpheme, and that's also a noun. So that stands as a noun and a noun to create football. We have the word white. Now white can sometimes be a noun, but it can also be an adjective. I'm going to call it an adjective here. And also board, which is a noun. So uh, there can be an adjective in our um, compound words. And there can also be a preposition as a part of a compound noun. So we have over here, which is our preposition. And we have coat, which is our noun. So these compound words are all made up of morphemes uh, from different uh, word classes. And that's our first point. Now, there are three ways that we can present compound words and when it comes to spacing or hyphens or writing it all together. And this is actually the cause of some discrepancy, some confusion when people are writing. So let's have a look at the different ways that we can write. Firstly, compound words can be written with a space in the middle of them, such as this one, apple tree. Sometimes people put a hyphen between apple and tree, sometimes they don't. But generally apple tree is accepted as two separate uh, nouns. Sometimes it's read as a noun modifier and a noun, and sometimes it's read as a compound noun. So how do we know? This is what we're going to sort of address. We also have it with a hyphen, such as long term. We can join our compound. There's an example of an adjective first, and then a noun long term joined with a hyphen. And finally, we can put these words together without any kind of hyphen or space, just as one word, footpath. So what is it that helps us determine the writing styles of whether things should be hyphenated or not? Well, it is quite ambiguous and it can change over time. And there are a couple of reasons that they might be written the way they are. And one of these is based on how long the word has been in the English language. And a good example to explain this is the word nostril. So let's take that. When we look at the etymology of nostril, we can see that it actually originated as a compound noun uh, from two original words. Nosu, or nos, which meant nose, and thrill, which meant hole. And over time, these words were so commonly used to represent the holes in our noses that they eventually became one word, nostril, now put together. So today, unless we're aware of the etymology, we would never consider nostril to be a compound word. And it would be very unusual for us to see these two words as two separate morphemes, unless of course, you know the origin. And this is how, over time, words become closer and closer together and, and, and written uh, as one word over time. I think a more modern example of that, certainly in my lifetime, when I was growing up, I was taught using blackboards. And now that I'm a teacher, I'm teaching using whiteboards. And when whiteboards were first introduced into the classroom, they were spelt with a hyphen, whiteboard with a hyphen there. And it's certainly been during this time that I can remember that they've changed to one word just like blackbirds were. So it's almost like as the acceptance over time of the concept of using a whiteboard instead of a blackboard became more secure, that's also when the compound presented itself as one single word joined together. So that probably has some sense of impact on it as well. Now, in addition to the etymology of the word, other factors that affect how the compound is written is the word class of the original morpheme as well as um, style. Simple as that. In other words, it's kind of just done by feel, which makes it impossible to provide a hard and fast rule in relation to its written form as to how it should be written. 
So if there's no hard and fast rule about how compound words should be written, how do we know when it's a compound? Well, it comes down to how we pronounce it. So let's take a look at the following three compounds or four compounds here to explore this. And the one we'll start with is bus stop. Why don't you listen to the words or word bus stop in the following two sentences? Sentence number one, how do you get to the bus stop from here? And sentence number two, will the bus stop in front of your house? So in the first sentence, I say bus stop. So the accent or the emphasis is on bus. However, in the second sentence, I said bus stop. And in that instance, the emphasis was on stop and not on bus. Therefore, we can come to the conclusion that bus stop is a compound in the first sentence, but it's not a compound in the second sentence. That comes down to where the stress on the word was being placed. Let's see if that rings true for other examples here. How about good guy? Sentence number one. He's one of the good guys. Or sentence number two, he's definitely a good guy. If you don't snap him up, someone else will. So in sentence number one, good guy. The emphasis or the stress was on the good. And in sentence number two, good guy. In that instance, the stress was on the guy. And it's not a compound. In that instance, good is an adjective describing guy. But in the first instance, good guy becomes the compound. All right, there's greenhouse. Are you growing plants in the greenhouse? Or do you live in a greenhouse? So we have a greenhouse where we grow plants and we have a greenhouse where we live. So in the second one, green is our adjective describing house. And in the first one, a greenhouse is where plants are taken care of and that's the compound compound noun. Okay. Uh, the same type of question can be asked about whether we write on a blackboard or need a blackboard to complete our buildings. So blackboard of course is what we used to write on and a blackboard is what we might use to build with. So there you have it, the compound. It's a fairly uh, straightforward part of morphology. It's just two morphemes put together. We can recognize them because the emphasis of the sound is always on the first part of the word and not the second. And there is no hard and fast rule about how we write the compound. It really has a lot of um, dependency on etymology, word class and style. All right, so I think that actually finishes the basics of morphology. Uh, the free morpheme, the bound morpheme, it's all its different types. However, there is another way of classifying morphemes um, that we, well, I'm going to look at in the next video. And the way that we do that is rather than looking at whether it's a free morpheme and a bound morpheme, we're going to look at morphemes according to their root and their stem. Okay, uh, so I'm looking forward to that. But until then, thanks for watching The Language Code.